have a question for you. How much costs your inventory? 3% a year with the cost of money? Much more than that. 5% with the cost of storage? Much more than that. 10%? much more. So I'm going to go to 20% in this specific example. And I can tell you, we massively underestimate our inventory cost. So in this video, I'm going to give you 12 parameters to calculate the real cost of your inventory. I'm going to give you a lot of examples with oil, planet and croissant. Yes, croissant. So let's talk about these 12 parameters. The first one, yes, is the cost of money. You can pay an interest rate when you borrow money uh, to the bank. You can see that the rates are going up uh, right now in the world. It could be like maybe three, four, five, even 10 or 20%. Uh, it depends in which country your company is uh, working and borrowing money. But the cost of money is not only the inventory you have in your warehouse or factory. We have to talk about the, what we call the cash to cash cycle. And to give you one example, let's say that you have to pay your suppliers within the next 30 days, but your customers will only pay you uh, within the next 60 days. So you have a gap of 30 days that you need to finance with money, with cash. In addition to that, you have all this inventory moving. Like you can check my video about lead time and like all the supply chain lead times, the storage, all the production and the distribution. And at the end, you have all this like uh, inventory that is moving or staying somewhere plus the cash flow gap between your payments of your suppliers and customers at the end you need to finance a total of 100 days that's what we call the cash to cash cycle in addition to the money cost we do have the insurance cost and for that we're going to pay a company to insure our inventory it could be from 0.01 percent to two three four five percent and this is an extra cost the third cost is the tax cost yes you have to pay tax on your inventory and the more you have inventory the more, the more you're going to pay tax it's not everywhere in the world for example in most of the states in america you don't have to pay for example in california but yes sometimes you have to pay and you should check with your uh, finance department number four you have the storage cost you need to pay to store your products in your warehouse in your factory and what is really important is the storage cost is non-linear what do i mean by that uh, let's get one example. You have the inventory volume and the storage costs. Uh, this is a linear cost, right? You have fixed costs and then you have the more you have inventory, the more you're going to pay. And to explain to you why it's non-linear, let's get this example with the COVID-19 oil cr crash we had a few years ago and we went down from $60 to minus $37. Why? Why? Because we didn't get enough space in the world to store all this oil after the demand uh, crash. It was not only about speculation and we went to minus $37. So what happened? This is the oil storage cost and you have the inventory volumes in terms of oil <laughs> volumes. We had a fixed cost and we were storing all this oil in multiple areas. But at one point, the demand started dropping. So we started like storing oil in any, <laughs> any place, truck, boat. But at one point, we had not enough space in the wall and the, the cost went crazy and we had to pay so much money that the, the, oil, the cost of the bottom became negative because of that. And that's why we had this uh, insane price for only a few days and a few weeks. So that's exactly what happened. You can see this is a non-linear uh, curve. And now we're going to apply it to the well storage cost. This is the same principle. You do have the fixed cost at the beginning. That's the cost, whatever your warehouse is 0% uh, full or 100%, you have this fixed cost. Then the more you have volumes and inventory volumes, the more you're going to pay. But at one point, you won't have enough space. So you're going to pay for extra storage space or maybe extra people to help you like at night to move the, the, the products. So you have to pay more than the average price for that. And at one point, you will have to open a new warehouse. And I can tell you when you open a new warehouse, this is a non-linear cost. You have huge costs, huge like new fixed costs that you need to pay to uh, cover all this uh, storage cost. That's why, once again, this is a non-linear and you have a huge gap between uh, these two. Number five, you do have the handling cost. It's the cost to move all your inventory. Of course, it could be part of your storage cost if you are working with a third party uh, logistics provider, but that's a cost for your inventory. And the more you have inventory, the more you're gonna pay. Then you do have the store control cost. It could be part of the handling cost, but I like to separate because you have this specific process, for example, what we call the stock take, like few times a year or at least once, we're gonna check what is the difference between the IT value of your inventory and the real, the physical value of your inventory. And you need to pay for every single piece you're gonna check. And it, it could be a huge cost for your company. And the more you have inventory, the more you're gonna pay. I just recorded another video how to calculate your inventory accuracy. So don't forget to subscribe. I'm going to publish this video very soon. 
give me a like and let's continue. <laughs> so after paying people to double check your inventory, uh, then you have the results and we call that the inventory accuracy gap. So it could be like quality or it could be like the stock that was stolen in your warehouse or store or factory. But at the end, you're gonna lose money because of that. Let's say like you are losing, okay, 2% of your inventory is missing and that's an extra cost you need to add in your total inventory uh, cost. Then we do have the promotion cost. And the promotion cost, clearly the more you wait uh, to promote your product because you have way too much, the more you're gonna pay for your promotion. Okay, so that's just a curve. I like to have this curve. For example, you, if you work for the fashion industry, you don't want to wait uh, for summer if you want to promote uh, winter products and the more you're going to wait the more the, the curve will be exponential then you have another cost is the what we call the destruction and donation cost and for this one it's very similar to the promotion you have your inventory value at the beginning and the more you're going to wait the more you will have to pay first you're going to do promotions minus 10 percent minus 20 minus 30 at one point you're going to give away your products and now i'm going to talk about croissant for example, when I go to my bakery every day, at the end of the day, sometimes I have too many croissants left. And you know what? Because it's the end of the day and it's not possible to sell them tomorrow, most of the time they give me away one or two extra croissants for free. So we call that a donation. I won't give you the address of my special bakery because this is a secret for me. <laughs> but to give you another example, I was working uh, in the cosmetic industry and at one point when we were close to the ex expiry date or after the expiry date, uh, we had to give away the products or even pay for destruction and the destruction was not free uh, because it was like chemical products. We had to pay uh, like a company and that was not a, a free cost and that was a very expensive cost. So the more you're going to wait, the more you're going to have to pay uh, to like basically uh, destroy this product. So if you want to know more about this, I recommend you to watch my video Slob uh, and Obsolete Inventory. That's a very good way to track and minimize uh, this impact. Number 10, we have what we call the complexity cost. This is not an easy one to calculate, but I can tell you the more you will have inventory, the more it's going to be complex and you will have way too many <laughs> inventory, people managing this inventory, too many flaws, too many like flows between uh, DCs, factories, and I can tell you that keep it simple is much cheaper and you will have also much less uh, inventory. This is one of my, <laughs> the baseline of ABC suppression is to keep it really simple and the more you get in simple, the less you will have this extra cost of uh, complexity like for example, Apple or Zara are two very good examples. I'm going to publish videos about these companies. If you want to know more, let me know in the comments and I'm going to publish uh, very soon. Number 11, I call it the missed opportunity cost. What is that? Just to give you one example, let's say you have 10 millions of inventory and you add an extra 2 millions. These 2 millions, because you use it for inventory, you are not using it for the projects. That will give you maybe a better return on investment, for example, product development or marketing or maybe opening a new country for your company. Uh, and this missed really, return investment because of that, it's what we call the missed opportunity cost. I recommend you to talk about your finance department or maybe directly with your stakeholder uh, to see what will be your target uh, return on investment. Then the last one is the planet impact cost. Yes, the more you will have inventory, the more you're going to use resources, the more you're going to spend energy to move and transform these resources, the more you're going to transport, the more you're going to store, the more you're going to have waste, water waste, packaging, uh, any kind of raw materials, and the more you will have pollution. This, this is a really like a really bad domino effect. And I really want to um, develop these subjects for the next uh, a few months and years because this is something very strategic. So we need to become more efficient and less, much less resource with the same value uh, for everyone. So to be honest, this is not an easy number to evaluate for the cost of your inventory, but one of the solutions should be to have a specific accounting that will consider the social and environmental impact. I'm going to talk more about this topic in my next uh, videos. So at the end, how much really costs your inventory? Uh, I just recommend you to list all these parameters and to try to define uh, the value for all of them. If you want to have more details, I recommend you to watch my video, Economic other quantity I have a very specific example sometimes you can group uh, categories for example storage and unleak or maybe store control could be uh, th the same category try to keep it simple don't try to keep it perfect but at the end knowing what would be the uh, approximate cost will really help you to take the right decision 
And for example, let's say that you have $10 million average annual inventory. The real cost for your company will be 21% of that, or so 2.1 uh, million US uh, dollars, which is a lot of money. And let's say you can reduce your inventory by 10%. You're going to save 21% of this savings. So you're going to save more than $200,000. Uh, this is a very important number. At the end, your challenge as a supply chain leader or as an entrepreneur is really to find the balance between the service for your customers and your inventory costs. And this balance point is critical for the profitability of your business, <laughs> for uh, your performance, and also for your impact on this uh, beautiful uh, planet. So the challenge is really to find this balance point between profit, inventory, and service. And uh, my goal is to provide you tools and methods to uh, go to the right uh, direction. So I hope you really enjoyed this video. I do recommend you to watch other videos about inventory I have one or to optimize your inventory or to calculate your inventory turnover ratio if you want to go further i have the ab6yz analysis and uh, the safety stock formulas and if you want to go to the next level i really recommend you to go to my uh, new uh, free workshop and in this workshop i'm going to share with you the 13 parameters you should master to reduce your stockouts and overstocks in the times of high uncertainty. So I have all the links below the video. Don't forget to give me a like. I love your comments as well. I will do my best to reply as fast as possible. And I see you for another video.